Podcast. We demystify what goes on behind the therapy room door. Join us on this voyage of discovery and co-creative conversations. This is The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors Podcast, with Bob Cook and Jackie Jones. Okay, welcome back to the next episode of The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors, with myself, Jackie Jones, and the wonderful Mr. Bob Cook. This is episode 137, Bob. Oh my God, are you leading soon up to my house number? Oh, don't give it away. 531. That's, <laughs> <laughs> There's a long way to go. <laughs> Um, so what we're going to be talking about in this episode is the danger of assumption in the therapy process, which links in, I think, quite well to the last one. Yeah, you know, I spent, well, I saw my last client when I was 69. I started seeing clients when I was 35, and I can't quite work out the maths. But before my clinical career, I attempted to move away from the world of assumptions. Because once you move into the world of assumptions with clients, you're onto a road of, uh, well, it's a difficult road. Because if you start assuming things, invariably, invariably they're wrong, and it, because no one's had your experience, and invariably uh, you set the path. <coughs> Uh, and I'll, and then, uh, usually the opposite path to healing. Yes, yeah. The path to a, re a repetitive cycle of their own history. Yeah. Now, you know, the truth of the matter is it's very, 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 very hard to work from a place of uh, lack of a judgment, lack of assumptions or judgment. Because in the Western world, particularly, we think, you know, we think all the time in the realm of assumptions and judgments. Judgments positive, judgments negatively, assumptions positively, assumptions negatively. That's the way we think all the yeah. time. Yeah. Move away from that takes, well, it takes quite a lot of. Um, skill really yeah for me when i think about assumption yeah. i always think about being in the here and now and taking what i'm seeing in front of me without you know looking to my past for reasons for that and just being curious yeah so curiosity demands open questions yeah because curiosity de de demands uh, phenomenal inquiry demands um, a real sense of openness in how you ask that. Yeah. Curiosity question. Yeah. Uh, I, I certainly agree with you. Um, curiosity, exploration, inquiry, they are all good methods to take you away. But sometimes we can literally just get hold of the wrong end of the stick through making assumptions about what a person is saying to us. So you made an interesting statement right at the beginning when you said, when you think of assumptions, you think of um, being in the adult ego state. In other words, that you won't be, I think, now you can contradict what I think you were saying, but I'm quite happy for you to do. I think you were saying something like, if you're in adult ego state, you won't be making assumptions. Yes. So let's define adult ego state then, just for the listeners' sake, because they okay. might not be TA people. Yeah. So from a TA world, Eric Byrne, who was the originator of transactionalists, it said, and he split the personality into three, parent ego state, adult ego state, and child ego state, that when the person is coming from the adult ego state or the adult part of themselves, they're acting appropriately to the age they are. So I'm 73, so I would be coming, I would be thinking, feeling, behaving from the 73 year old of me and yeah. not the younger self or some sort of uh, moral duty part of myself. I would be coming from 
the age appropriate part of myself. Yeah. 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 That's that's how you see adult then. Yeah. And responding and <clears throat> reacting to things in the moment as they're happening, as opposed to predicting the future or reliving the past. Yeah. So when, so what you're saying, if you are in your adult league state, you won't be making assumptions. Yes. That's a very good way, and I, I think a really good tip for the people to think about who are listening to this podcast. The next question, of course, is um, about how we know whether we're in our adult ego state or not in the first place. That's very good, because I used to think I was in mine a lot of the time before I started my training, and I realised that I'm not in it that often. <laughs> so we may often think we're in our... Yeah. I don't think it's state appropriate to the age my 73 year old. Yeah. And actually, we're not. Yeah. We're another part of ourselves altogether, but we're not aware of that. Yes. Yeah. Now, TA, that is called contaminations coming from a part of ourselves. And we think we're in our dad or we're actually coming from some, some sort of parental belief system passed down by our significant other people, or we're coming from a younger part of ourselves, even though we think. We're coming from our adult. Yeah. So often, I think we make assumptions from our younger part that we think it's adult. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's very common. Yes, I do too. Which, again, without you know being critical of ourselves, it, it's it's easy done. We we fall into. It. For me, I just think sometimes. In order to be in our adult and in the here and now, we've got to have our eye on the ball 100% of the time because as soon as we veer off, we're going into our past or trying to predict the future and we, we, we've lost it. We're not there anymore. And I think the best thing, if we find ourselves in the world of assumptions and we are perceptive enough to be aware of that, we check it out with our clients. Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, is that how you see it then? Uh, yeah. I mean, thinking about maybe X, X, and X. Is that how you understand this? But the trick of this is we have to be aware enough, we're in our adult enough. Uh, that's the bit. And that's the hard bit, I think. Yes, yeah. Very easy to move into assumptions. Assumptions, you're correct, usually come from parent. Or our younger self and not from adults it's a very good way to look at it yeah yeah because the other thing that i think as well is if i'm having a feeling or a reaction i'm not in the here and now that's a really could you say a little bit more about that then so well let's see what you say before i maybe i I'll... just i just think being in our adult is a very logical place to be <laughs> I see it as kind of information in, information out. If okay. I'm having a reaction or a response to something, I need to attach that to something personal to then have a reaction to it, if that makes sense. Okay, so here we are. Here, here's, a, here's a sort of a question to you, really. Yeah, okay. Okay, see, a client comes in the door, you sit down, client sits down, and as you go to sit down, you step on a drawing pin which has been left there inadvertently by for whatever reasons and as you step your foot goes down on the drawing pin you scream out because of the pain of the drawing pin yeah right and yeah. you go scream out would, now would you say then the description what i've just said then is from an adult geek state yes Let's take the same example again. So client sits down, you sit down, and your foot goes down on the drawing pin, and then you scream out and go to a three-year-old tantrum. Yes. There's the difference. Absolutely. And I was thinking that it's the immediate response after the the yeah. pain that is in the here and now. Who the bloody hell's left that there or whatever it is that, that comes straight after it, yeah. And it happens so quickly. Yes, that's that's the thing with the shifts. It yeah. does happen so quickly. Yeah. You think you feel that you've come from adult, but actually you're a three year old yeah. going whatever you're going into. 
yeah that's a sort of extreme example to how quick this can happen in many different areas we think we're an adult yeah we're not well as you're saying that i think <laughs> my head would explode before i was in adult all the time i know i couldn't do it no i don't think see that's the, that's the bit i was going to go to i think i think that exactly that we're shifting all the time yeah our assumptions and i agree with you here is in the world of the younger self and the parent ego state yeah yeah it's just it's being consciously aware that we do it that to me is the big thing if we're denying the fact that we make assumptions i think we're doing ourselves and our clients a really big disservice huge disservice we need to check out everything yeah yeah in the world of neurodiversity in the world of difference in the world of cultural implications or whatever we make us if we make assumptions we're lost yeah what, what i mean by that is we're lost with our clients yes and even as you're speaking i'm thinking i i know with some clients i feel uncomfortable if i need to check in with them and ask them but that in itself is me not being in my adult. I've gone into my child because I'm feeling anxious about raising something with a client. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's just another level, another layer in the therapy room that we need to be aware of. Yeah, because if, because if we're making unconscious, you know, assumptions, sorry, and we're not aware of them, the client, several things can happen. The client may feel missed yeah yeah they may feel they're not important yeah they may feel that they're defined they may feel they're not heard that's what i meant when i said we will lose our clients yeah stay in the world of assumptions yeah yeah the therapy is it's ineffective it's not absolutely yeah it often and often leads to adaptation by the client because they're adapting to fit into your assumption and you'll never know it. Yeah. Which again is, is a wormhole that you don't want to go down. <laughs> I'm not sure whether we've done this or we've spoke about it or it's one that's coming up, but there's something about is anything real in the therapy room? And sometimes oh. I feel like that's, that's what goes on in the therapy room. There's so many different facets to everything. Oh, to, uh, let, 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 let me give you another different facet. Um, I, 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 and uh, we may meander off a little bit in this podcast with this facet. But it's in the world of what we're talking about. And that is when our non our nonverbal behaviour is contradictory to what we're saying. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a that's a wormhole for you isn't it absolutely and you don't realize it until you witness it until it's happening in the room yeah well, you think you're an adult but actually your non-verbal behaviors indicate you aren't yeah and unfortunately i think i think in terms of therapeutic healing i'm saying unfortunately a lot of the attachment by the other or the trust by the other is a response to nonverbal behavior, not to what is being said. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what I mean by that is that the other person first instinct, I believe, almost like osmosis, is to pick up on the nonverbal aspects of the person in front of you rather than what the person says and certainly if the what the person says doesn't match with the nonverbal behavior you you will lose a person in front of you yeah when you're but, saying nonverbal do you mean the feeling that they get i mean things like uh, you say hello it's really pleased you really pleased to meet you however your left leg is shaking or you 
or the extreme agitation and scare that you've just walked in from the an argument from your wife or whatever it is. Whatever's happening, or you that's one example. You shake somebody's hand, but your hand is very clammy. Or there's right. not handshake. Okay. Or there's agitation in your handshake. Doesn't match up with the words that you've said. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I, I get what you're saying. For me, what sometimes happens is I just get a feeling. I have a reaction. They're saying one thing, but that's not yeah. what so I'm getting from them. Usually, I think that feeling is a response to non behavioral. Possibly, yeah, yeah. That I've just not recognized that that's what's going on. Yeah. And assumptions are often said cognitively, but the behavior of the person. It's very different. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Because even just the physical aspect of a client, we can make assumptions about them. Oh, all the time. On, you know, what is it that, you know, the, the first five seconds of meeting somebody, we make a first impression of them? That's right. What about in the world of, and it could come some TA again, gallows laughter. Yeah. <clears throat> we make assumptions, don't we? Yeah. My wife love, loves watching a television program. I don't know if it's still on. It's a reality TV program. It seems to be on all the time, but I think it's ended. We've got another lot coming up. I think it's Married at First Sight. I love that program. Surf <laughs> anyway, Australia, whatever it is. And for people who don't know, they, uh, it's a reality TV, TV program where partners uh, marry at first sight. And yeah. then this whole experiment or project, whatever you want to call it, for the next 36, seems forever, uh, where they sort of um, work out whether they want to be together or to stay married. Now, a lot, a lot, when you watch this, when I watch it, uh, episodes of this particular period, a lot is built on assumptions. Yeah. <laughs> I but think you should do that, Bob, because the professionals are, are rubbish at, at matching people. <laughs> I'd be good at that. I was, so I was going to say, I think you should be one on the, the board of that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm sure there's psychologists and psychotherapists behind the scenes, but I think sometimes the matching is completely pants. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, very interesting. So what we're going to talk about next time, which I'm presuming this is one of your better ones, and you can take the lead on this, Bob, is is therapy like chess? Because I know that you <laughs> love chess. I know these are all my titles. <laughs> oh, anything that's got football in it or chess in it. <laughs> yes, this is one of my titles. And it really means if you, oh, no, I'll wait until the podcast. Wait until next time. But you might have to explain this one to me in that one, Bob. I just, I, I saw this one and I thought, yep, that's definitely <laughs> Bob all over. This is, <laughs> this is very much a podcast for me. Okay, dokie. Right. Until next time, Bob. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. You've been listening to The Therapy Show. Behind Closed Doors podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. We'll be back next week with another episode.